the majority of Christians around the world are not universalists. And in some circles, it would be considered absolutely damnable heresy. And it's because it's misunderstood, for one thing. I mean, as, as we're not saying there's no hell. We're not saying that everybody is uh, going to immediately enter into bliss, et cetera. That's not what we're saying. And it's just, it, it's, it has to do with, the, you know, with, God, with what you believe about God. I believe that um, the, the problem is, okay, they, they are taught to think of God as living in the present moment. In fact, 20 years ago, there were evangelicals actually putting forth the notion here in America that uh, God doesn't really know the future like everyone else. He has to find out. This concept of God that is completely wrong, that is so limited, like he's limited to our kind of life and therefore he reacts and yes it can appear that way in scripture the iconic language the anthropomorphic language where it appears that god is reacting when israel sins etc but if we really understand god who does know the end from the beginning then we have to really consider uh the restoration of all things, the end, as Gregory of Nyssa did, as, as something that was present in God's creation from the beginning. The end and the beginning to him are the same because it's all one word. So if you understand God as infinite, as out, outside of time, as the uncreated one who made it all by his will strictly, uh, and then if you realize that God is love, which is revealed to us and exact was revealed just in those words and written in scripture, God is agape, then what would he have made? What kind of creation would he have made? To me, the idea of a God who makes a universe with the intention of having millions, maybe billions of people suffer endless, as they call it now, eternal conscious torment. That's a nice phrase and that's, that pretty much summarizes it. I, I would say that if you believe that God is capable of that, and then if you even go further and believe that God saves people strictly on the basis of electing a few and damning everyone else to this constant torment throughout eternity, if this is what you believe about God, uh, then you have a problem morally. You will not be able to acquire charity. You can't, and I'm not saying why. It, it's Albert Einstein uh, let us know that the speed of light is the universal speed limit. In terms of virtue, which has everything to do with moral growth and moral understanding, to acquire true holiness, which means charity, ultimately above all things, the bond of perfectness, as it says in the Colossians. To acquire charity, you can't worship as God something that you would have to rise above morally yourself. I don't believe that's psychologically possible. You might you'd be able to do good things and you might have wonderful emotions at times and be very warm hearted to some people, but you're not going to acquire the charity that St. Paul wrote about in the 13th chapter for, uh, of 1 Corinthians. You're never going to get there as long as that's what you believe about God because you're not going to be morally superior to and more virtuous than what you worship as God. It's not possible. Just like the universal speed limit, this is what I call the virtue limit. It just limits you. That's as far as you can go. And so you want to look at how this, uh, look, look at the American evangelicals with their gun toting and their, their uh, celebration of violence and, and, and all these things. And you say, where does it come from? It comes from their theology. It's immoral theology because ultimately it worships an immoral and evil being instead of the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ.